Hello, we're back on the boat after the live stream. Okay, I've decided on a plan. What I'm going to tackle first is the mould inside the boat and I'm going to have a go at cleaning the outside up. Those are going to be the two jobs I try and do first. Um, mould, uh, I'm guessing it's mould. There's sort of black stuff and spotty stuff in a few areas on the boat. So I've got some magical spray stuff that I'm going to fire onto that, try and um, do a quick job on that. And the other thing I want to do is see whether or not my gel coat is recoverable. Um, so most of the outside of this boat is in a horrible condition. Um, now, obviously it's dirty, uh, which is one of the things I aim to resolve today. But you can see there's, well, I hope you can see, there's just like a billion micro cracks. Now, these aren't stress cracks. I think these are cracks from the gel coat being put on too thick and then cracking with heat or something similar. Um, and unfortunately, they are literally all over the boat. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to mix up a blend of cleaner and bleach and other stuff. Bleach because it's just rank and uh, full of algae or whatever that is. Um, and I'm just going to give a cockpit a quick clean as a bit of a proof of concept. And then what I hope to do next time is get some gel coat polish and put a machine polisher over this and see when it's cleaned up whether or not I can salvage this gel coat or whether or not I'm going to have to look to either re-gel coat the boat, don't really want to do that, or to use a two, two pack polyurethane paint on it. Um, again, I don't really want to do that either. So I'm hoping it's semi-recoverable, but I can't see polishing getting rid of those micro cracks. But anyway, enough waffle. Let's see how this works. So I've got some boat wash stuff. I've got some bleach. I'm going to mix it all up in a bucket. I'm going to move some of these lines out of the way and then I'm going to go wild. And we'll see what kind of job it does. I'm going to leave the old traveler line there because I don't want the boom coming across and knocking my camera into the water. Um, and also, if the old traveler line gets covered in bleach or cleaner, I'm not that fast.
Well, that was largely unsuccessful. It's done a good job at removing kind of the bulk deposits of stuff. Uh, but there's clearly a lot of ingrained dirt in the gel coat. Or at least I think it's ingrained dirt. Maybe it's just the cracks and the difference in colour between the gel coat and I guess the fiberglass. Don't really know. Anyway, not a spectacular outcome. And interestingly, even these bits of gel coat, which wouldn't have been exposed to UV, have they cracked? They don't look perfect, but they look a lot better conditioned than everything else. Not down here though, crikey. I guess it's difficult to tell. Um, I should really have taken more before and after photos. Oh, there's some heavy wear down there, crikey. Um, yeah, I didn't use an amazing amount of uh, the wash. It said dilute um, 10 to 1, wait, 1 to 10 uh, detergent to water, and I didn't. I went, I don't know, a lot less than that. Chuck some bleach in as well, but I guess I won't necessarily clean. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll have to just bite the bullet and chuck a whole lot in and give it another go. Meh. A few moments later. Right, uh, it's the next day. I've come down just to give it, well, to pick a few things up actually, but let's have a look. Some mangy water down there, mangy water down there. I guess it looks better. It's removed the worst of it. But definitely not to a point where you could do any level of polishing. And there's still a lot of it around, to be honest. But what I'm really unsure about is in the gel coat itself, where you've got all these cracks, you've obviously got these um, kind of, yeah, dark colored cracks. I'm not sure if that's ingrained dirt or whether that's just the transparency of the, the fiberglass behind it. Don't really know. Anyway, I'm gonna call that attempt a fairly complete failure. Uh, now, what I was going to do was try again with a stronger concentration of detergent um, and actually use it at the right ratio, uh, but one of my viewers has suggested using vinegar, so I might give that a go. Um, or it's possible that actually I'm not going to be able to clean uh, these little micro cracks out any further, but there's definitely some improvements that can be done with, with what's here anyway. I wouldn't be happy polishing it just yet. Anyway. So the other thing we did, that was the day after I cleaned it, if I didn't make that obvious. Um, so this was covered in mold and now it's only slightly covered in mold, but generally looks all right. And yeah, very happy with that. So yeah, next time, better job at cleaning. At least it looks better than it did to be fair. Um, yeah. We'll go from there. Okay, one last thing I will do in this episode. Fit my new traveler lines. So there's one. Happy days. And there's the last remaining old one, which despite being in better condition than the other one, is going to be replaced as well. does appear to be a slightly thicker line than what was there but it shouldn't be I tried running this in 6mm line and it didn't go very well so this is the elusive 7mm
bigger of eight in the end. Help with grip as well as stopping it running out. Right. Now let's see how it runs. This doesn't look brilliant. There we go. Hmm. That's the one thing with these splices, they're not awfully flexible. I mean, to be honest, it, it's unlikely to be running all the way down there anyway, but I don't know whether they'll loosen up with time or whether I need to work them a bit more of a hammer to loosen the outer braid. I'd say that's good enough though, it's only an, an inch short of the end, so yeah. There we go, new traveler lines. <laughs>